What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about a kind of modeling that I think has uh, flown a little bit under the radar in SketchUp, which is solid modeling. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Solid Tools is actually a tool that's built into the pro version of SketchUp that you can find just by right clicking and enabling solid tools. I don't think it's even in your list in the extension manager. I don't know if you can even turn it off or not. Um, so if I scroll down, I don't think I have a solid tools in here. So I think that it's just enabled by default, um, but it should be contained inside of your SketchUp. And so basically what it is, is it's a collection of different tools designed to help you interact different kinds of solid models with non-solid models. And actually, let's talk about that first. So a solid model is basically a model that is closed in with no stray edges and doesn't have any interior faces. So basically it's a hollow shape that if you like filled it up with water um, and then you like moved it around, it wouldn't, no water would fall out and there's nothing on the inside of it. And you can kind of look using x-ray mode right here to see that there's nothing inside of the shape. But if I was to take all of these faces, I'm just gonna triple click, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna make it a group. Notice how my outline or my entity info is gonna tell me that this is a solid group. So this is telling me that it's a solid, so it'll work with solid tools. Now, if we look at this box right here, if I triple click and I make this one a group, notice how it doesn't tell me that it's a solid, even though the box that I have is completely filled in. And the reason why is because we have what's known as a stray edge. So a stray edge is an edge that's coming off the outside of the object that um, basically is just adding geometry here and it's just messing up the way that SketchUp looks at this object. However, if I erase that edge, and then I select this and make it a group, then this is going to be in there as a solid group. Now, in addition, let's say that we were to push pull an object and we accidentally did it in create new face mode. Notice how this looks like a solid object, but if I triple click and I make it a group, notice how it's just a group. The reason for that is because if we toggle x-ray mode on, we can see that we have a face on the inside of this object. So to fix this, all you would do is just erase out the face on the inside. So in this case, I just erased the edges around the outside, but you could also right click and hide this face in order to get in here and just delete out that face if you needed to do that. But notice how now this is a solid group. So internal faces are definitely an issue. So same thing with this right here. If I make it a group, it's just telling me that it's a group. So what I would need to do is right click, hide this, and I'm gonna delete out this face that's on the interior. And notice how now this is hollow. Then I can do an edit, unhide, all. But now this should be a solid group. Now, another thing that causes things to not be solid is holes in objects. So if you look at this cylinder, right, it's pretty close to being a solid, but there's a hole in it. So it's only a group. However, if I come in here and I just trace over top of this and draw a face and then Click on the object, notice how it's a solid. So if there's holes in your objects, you need to fill them in. Now there's a great extension in the extension warehouse called Solid Inspector. So you should be able to just come in here and just type in Solid Inspector right here, hit the enter key, and you want Solid Inspector 2, and it's a free extension from TomTom. Tom. You can see it's very popular um, because it's very powerful. So if you install this extension, what Solid Inspector is going to do, and let's go ahead and enable it, is it's gonna take a group and it's going to analyze it. So in this case, this is telling me that I have one stray edge, which I can see on the inside here, as well as two surface borders, meaning holes. So to delete the stray edge, you can just click on fix, and this is going to fix it for you. The surface borders, you're gonna to have to fix yourself. So you have to come in here, and in this case, I can just draw a line across this surface um, in order to fill this in. Now, notice that this is gonna create some faces on the inside, which we don't necessarily want. And so one of the things that I find helpful is toggling on the hidden geometry of the object, just so I can kind of see um, where the gaps are. And so in this case, this is a little bit tricky. So what I would do is I would take this edge because it's two segments that are missing in here. And I would actually use the rotate tool in copy mode in order to copy this across, but then I can just draw an edge and an edge in order to fix the hole, right? So same thing over here. 
Actually, in this case, this one's pretty easy. I can just draw across the face. But notice how with everything that I learned here, I can make a solid. So now you can see that this is a solid group. And so what Solid Tools does is it gives you the ability to take these solids and interact them with each other. So I'm going to toggle my hidden geometry off. And what I want to do is I want to take this, uh, this sphere and I want to move it over. And notice how both of these are solid groups. This will only work if the groups you're working with are solids, which is why we spent so much time on that. But if I move this over, notice how there are different functions inside of solid tools for doing different things. So there's an option to subtract one object from another. There's an option to intersect, meaning you can keep only the areas where the objects intersect. You can also use this to split these into multiple different groups. Most of the time you're going to um, use either the union or the subtraction, right? You're usually either going to be combining objects or you're going to be removing objects. So let's say we were to use the union. What it's going to do is it's going to ask us to select one object, select another object right here like this. And so what that's going to do is that's going to take this object and it's going to combine it into a singular object and it's going to remove everything that isn't a part of that intersection. So notice how it took this sphere, combined it with this other sphere right here and use that in order to um, create a singular object. Now, we can also use this to remove material. So let's say I've got a solid box right here. I'm just going to move this over so that it intersects with the sphere a little bit. And what I want to do is I want to use the subtract function in order to subtract this group from this group. Well, notice what that did is that came in here and that removed this object or the um, it removed all the material where the object was intersecting with the other object right here. So that can be super powerful um, for a lot of different things. So let's say, for example, before we did that, let's say we made a copy of our sphere. And a lot of the time, it's a good idea to keep copies of your base geometry just in case you want to use them again, because this is kind of removing these out. But if I remove this from this, this, notice how I've got this sphere in here that's been cut. But then if I move this sphere back, and let's say I was to scale that down a little bit. Notice how I could use this second sphere in here. And again, it's usually a good idea to keep a copy of that geometry, but I could remove, whoops, this object from this object right here. So notice how I could use that to create kind of a cut into this object right here. Now there is also an interesting tool in here, which is you can use this to create an outer shell. So what that means is that means if I toggle my x-ray mode on, what you're going to see is I've actually created a smaller sphere inside of a larger sphere like this. So this is actually two objects. Well, if I select both of these and then I use the outer shell function, what that's going to do is that's going to combine these objects together. And now if I take a section cut across the sphere like this, you can see how it removed material on the inside of this, leaving kind of a shell right here. So this can be very valuable for creating thickened objects if you want to like 3D print or something like that. So um, high level, that's how you can use this in order to kind of intersect things together inside of SketchUp using those tools. But let's take a look at some practical examples um, because I really like some of the applications for things like architectural modeling. And so a lot of the time we see this used, um, I see it used a lot in Blender for creating kind of like hard surface models or models that are more like things. Um, so, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rotate this a little bit like this, but I, I, I see it used, I see this kind of modeling used a lot for creating like uh, futuristic crates or other things like that. But again, I could just come in here and I could use this in order to remove material like this. So you can use it to create things like these cuts really easy. And while uh, this is very simple, you could also do this with much more complex shapes. So for example, let's say that I was to, We'll just draw a circle right here. And I'm not sure exactly what this is going to do, so we can all kind of find out together, but I'm gonna remove this from this object. And let's say I was to move this up a little bit. So I'm gonna move it so that it's aligned right here, maybe. 
we'll push pull this across. Well, instead of me having to deal with doing all the intersection of geometry and things like that, what I can do instead is I can just use solid tools. So I'm just gonna make this a group. So that's solid and this is solid. And I can use this in order to remove material. So I could subtract this object from this object right here. Um, you could also like, rotate this like this and do that same kind of thing. But maybe we move it forward like this in order to create this more rounded shape. So you can use this to create some complex things. Um, one of the things that I really like it for is say that we've got something like the base of an object, right? So say you were gonna manufacture some kind of a post base or something like that. Well, what I've done is I've just come in here and I've just created four boxes. And what I can do is I can use that subtract mode in order to remove these boxes. Whoops from the corners like this. And so what that does is that's actually very similar to the way that you might manufacture this in the sense that it's coming in here and it's cutting that material out like this. And then you might end up coming in here with some kind of like beveling extension or something like that in order to bevel out the edges. But now you could cut a hole in here or do whatever you want. And one other thing that you might do is you could also build that into the shapes that you're using to cut the holes. So in this case, right, before I cut the hole, what I might do is, whoops, what I might do is add some additional geometry to the center of this object. So I'm just gonna find the center using inferencing right here. Well, in this case, say that you had a hole size, you could go ahead and just make this a part of that. Right, so what you could do is you could take this whole thing, notice how that's still a solid group. So I could just move this down so that it aligns with the point where I want this, uh, this cut to kind of stop. But notice how this is kind of going through the base of that object. Well, if I use the subtract function, notice how that would also cut the hole. And obviously you would want to get this a little bit more centered, but it gives you an idea of what's possible using um, these solid tools. Now, another thing that I really like this for, so I've downloaded this detail from the 3D warehouse. It's just the steel column and beam connection from CompuGraph if you want to download it and follow along. But say I've got something like this shape right here, and I wanted to create a 3D cut through. So something that shows a little bit more of how this whole thing is kind of coming together. What I could do is I could draw a box on top of this. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push pull it up and I'm gonna make it a group. And you can tell I use this a lot for the cutting of openings. That's probably my primary use for this tool, um, but there are other things that you can do with it as well. But what I would do is I would take this and I would just intersect it with this model. And as long as this model is a solid, which it is, you can see it right here. I'm gonna go ahead and make it unique. Um, but I could take this and I could use it to create a cut in this shape so that I can show what the detail underneath looks like, like this. And this also gets interesting because what you could do is you can use it to create those kind of more organic cuts. So say for example, this has some rebar on the inside of it on top of the deck. So what I could do is I could draw on the surface and you might even, you could either draw some arcs or you might even use the freehand tool. So you might even draw a shape like this. We're gonna delete out this extra. We'll delete out these edges right here. But what I could do is I could push pull this up, make it a group, and we want to make sure that it's a solid group, which it is. And then you could just move it down like this. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to flip this like this. But you could use it in order to create this more like stylized cut through of a condition like this. So um, definitely super powerful from that standpoint. So another thing I like to do with solids is you can use objects on surfaces and do like an intersect faces with model and then kind of delete out the geometry. But um, to me, that's kind of slow. And um, sometimes you have to deal with some additional geometry that you don't really want to mess with. What I did instead is I created a surface like this. And all I did is I just drew lines down. So you draw one line and then you draw 
lines to the same length like this. Um, and you do that all the way around the outside of this in order to make it a solid. But once I make this a solid group, right here, what I can do is I can use this to remove material. So if you're cutting a basement into a house, for example, what you might do is you might use a box like this one, um, and then you would go ahead and push pull that box down to whatever you want the depth of the basement to be. So um, however deep you need to go into the hill, you cut it like this, but then you would use this to remove that material from this object, and it gives you this flat surface to work from. And then you could come in here, you could model out walls around the outside. If you're doing um, if you're doing any kind of like a retainage or anything like that, you could use um, just kind of rectangular tools in order to push pull those up. So another interesting application for this is if you take a bunch of solid geometry, right? So if I click in here, notice how these are all solid surfaces, but they're not groups. They're just raw geometry. And I group them together. Notice how as long as they don't intersect and as long as these are solids, this shows up as a solid group. What that means is you can use that to do really interesting things with multiple shapes, right? So I could subtract these from this surface right here like this. And we'll toggle our hidden geometry on so that you can see this. So you can see how you could use this in order to create multiple cuts at one time. That gets really interesting when you start dealing with multiple objects. So for example, I've got all of these different spheres here. And at the moment, notice how this shows up as a group. That's because I've grouped each one of these and overlapped them. And so what I would do is I would just combine these. So I would use the outer shell function in order to combine all of these shapes together into a single object and that works because those were all solids but now I've got this whole thing here and I'm just going to explode this group but notice how this is a solid group and these are all intersecting with this surface and I'm gonna go ahead and move them up a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and push pull this down a little bit for this exercise but we can do the same thing here where we take this object subtract it from this object, and it's gonna give us more of a interesting surface like this one. Then you could come in and you could do some fun stuff with this, like using an extension like Slicer or something like that. So if I used TIG's Slicer extension, and you always wanna save before you do this, but if I use that Slicer extension, and it's gonna take a second because of all the geometry in here, but you could slice this into parts and pieces vertically to give you that kind of like sliced organic cut surface look inside of SketchUp. And we could come in here and we could use the Soften Edges tool in order to soften this up, but see how you could use this to create really interesting shapes inside of SketchUp. All right, so that's an overview of how you can use solid tools in SketchUp to create a bunch of interesting shapes. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What have you used solid tools for in the past? As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.